All right, guys, let's work some of these problems. Now, things to keep in mind when you read this is the information that you're reading about the population distribution or is it about the sampling distribution? So we really want to start to separate which distribution am I talking about? So keep that in mind. And then like always, what is the variable of this problem? So the height of young women follows a normal distribution with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Find the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 66.5 inches. So let's start there. All right, and let's see if we can figure out the variable. All right, so things that I'm noticing, things I wanna highlight, I hear normal distribution. All right, All right, I see mean of 64.5 inches. Right, standard deviation of 2.5 inches. All right, and then here's the variable, height of young women. All right, so I know there's a lot that I highlighted in there, but that's, that's what I'm looking at. So I know my X variable, right? We're talking about height. The units are inches. All right, this is definitely a continuous numerical variable. And specifically, they told me the distribution. They told me it squiggles N. 64.5 and then 2.5 and so from that I can I can glean that information all right I see my buzzword of probability and it says a randomly selected woman so I'm not talking about I took a random sample of 30 women and I looked at their average one woman just the uh so I want to go off of and when I said uh I mean this this uh a randomly selected woman I'm going to deal with the population distribution right now so I want the probability that a woman is taller than 66.5 inches. So I'm talking about height, and I want to be taller than 66.5, okay? Now, it doesn't matter if you write 66.5 or, I'm sorry, it matters if you write 66.5. I meant to say, it doesn't matter if you put greater than or greater than or equal to. If you remember from chapter six, the equal to, picks up no additional area under the curve so it won't change our answer. All right, I'm talking about the population. What do I know about the population? It's normally distributed. So if we go back to our favorite little traits table, right? if I want a probability and I'm on a normal distribution, I will use normal CDF. And it's for this particular, um, our particular problem in 6A, it actually does follow this format because I did have a greater than probability. So I'm gonna run with normal CDF, and we're gonna go low, high, what was our mean? It looks like it was 64.5, and our standard deviation was 2.5. So let's see what these numbers are giving us. All right, so we will, let me clear that out, normal CDF, uh, low, high, mean, standard deviation. Oh, and I didn't close that parentheses, but it, it actually doesn't make a difference. I, I like to close them just because I like to be precise, but we have about 0.212 here. All right, so there's about a 21% chance that if I pick one woman, one young woman, that her height will be taller than 66.5 inches. Okay, let's contrast that to the wording in 6b. Right, so I still see probability, but do we see now mean height? And we've got an SRS of 10. So I want you to see this, this is the clue, right? I'm now looking at a sample of size 10, and I want the average. So all of a sudden, once I take an, a random sample, I am no longer on the population distribution. I want to look at the sampling distribution. And before I do any normal CDF shenanigans, let's see what these numbers are. So from here, Right? I need to figure out the distribution for X bar. So let me put my three question marks and see if we can fill this in. Right? So don't just jump straight to normal CDF. Let's see if we're allowed to use it. So let's see if we can figure out the rules for this. Okay. So as we go through, it says that the mean will be the same center as the population distribution. So that means that 64.5, if that was the average height of young women, from the population, it'll be the same thing on the sampling distribution. Okay, 
Now let's talk about the standard deviation or the standard error. All right. This says take the standard deviation from your population distribution and divide it by the square root of your sample size. All right, so my original standard deviation for my population was 2.5, and I need to divide that by the square root of 10. Let's see what that number is equal to. It looks like it's about 0.791. Okay, now the big question, can I put the n here? If I can put the n here, I can use normal CDF and calculate this probability. If I cannot put the n here, I cannot do this problem. So let's see if we meet either assumption for normality. All right, so in order to get normality in mean land, all right, one of these two has to be met. Was the population stated as normal? And if we look, it sure was. So since the population distribution was stated as normal, I can automatically put the n here, which means I get to use normal CDF. And that's good because the sample size was not large enough for the CLT to kick in. All right, so here we go. Probability, capital P with some stuff in parentheses. Mean height exceeds 66.5. So mean height, not one person, but is the average greater than 66.5. All right, I want us to really hone in on this was a randomly selected woman, so I put the X. This was the average of 10 women, so I put X bar. Now because the N is here, I'm allowed to use normal CDF. Right? So in terms of how do you calculate probabilities, again, use normal CDF. For example, if you had a less than or equal to, you would use this format. We don't have that, so I'm not, I'm not gonna use this exact format right now. So we're gonna say, normal CDF, we have the same low and high, we're still going from 66.5 to positive infinity, and then our mean was 64.5, but our standard deviation is no longer 2.5, it's smaller, right? Because as sample size increases, variability decreases, so this is 0.791, okay? All right, so let's see what we're getting here. I'm gonna rework this, but I'm gonna change this out to 0 0.791. This time I will close that parentheses. And when I hit enter, I'm getting a much, much smaller number of 0 0.006. All right, and if we take a step back and just try and think about what's happening, if most women are, if the average height is 64.5, it's not super rare if you find one woman that's taller than 66.5 inches, even though that's almost a standard deviation above the mean, right? That would happen 20% of the time just by chance. So this is not that rare. But if you look at 10 women, right? If you pull 10 women from this population and look at their average height, it's actually pretty rare for the average height to be 66.5 or higher, right? That only happens 0.006 of the time. Because again, if the average woman is 64.5 inches tall with a deviation of 2.5, it would be really hard to get woman after woman after woman after woman to be taller than 66.5 just by chance so that that average would be higher than 66.5, right? Especially, like, think the deviation's only about 0.8 inches, right? 66.5 is pretty far over that mean, which is why it's pretty rare, okay? So we got that happening here. All right, so with that, let's take a, a look at example seven. All sorts of stuff happening in example seven. So as we read through example seven, like with all of it, let's be on the listen for what, what information did they give us about our population? What did they give us about our sampling distribution? Right, and what is the variable in this problem? So it says, in a recent study reported on October 12, 2012 on Flurry blog, the average age of tablet users is 34 years. Suppose that the standard deviation is 15 years, take a sample of size 100. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about. It looks like we're talking about the age of tablet users. So I'm just gonna write that here. Then I am looking at the age of tablet users. And the units on this are years. And again, age is continuous numerical, okay. So let's see what we've got. It's telling us that the average age is 34 years old. The standard deviation is 15 years. 
All right, and then I'm gonna say age of tablet users is the variable. And I'm also seeing this n equaling 100. All right, so let's see what we can fill in about our population versus our sample. Or I should say our population distribution versus our sampling distribution. So I'll put my six question marks here and see what we can do. All right, so it said that for the population distribution, the average was 34 years old and the standard deviation was 15. All right, it also told me my sample size was 100. That won't come into play until my sampling distribution. But let's figure this out. All right, if I want to build from a population distribution to a sampling distribution, let's see how this works. All right, I'm talking about the sampling distribution of averages. The center is the same as my population distribution. All right, so if the average age of sampling or of tablet users was 34 years old, and I take a random sample of 100 of them, I still think that average is going to be close to 34 years old. Right, but what I don't think is that it's not going to vary by 15 years. It's going to be much smaller. So I'm going to take that 15 and I'm going to divide it by the square root of my sample size, which in this case is the square root of 100. So let's see what we got here. 15 over the square root of 100. And when I crunch that number, Oops, let me clear all of this out from that last problem. 15 divided by the square root of 100 will give me 1.5. Okay. Now, nowhere in here did it mention the word normal distribution. I, I don't know what was happening here. Okay. But let's see if I can assess something about the shape of the sampling distribution. Okay. So here are the rules for putting the end down on the sampling distribution. Was my population stated as normal? It wasn't. So assumption one is not met. I'm just gonna put a little note here, all right, just so we know. Assumption one, not met. Okay. Let's see if assumption two got us normality. Did the central limit theorem kick in? All right, was my sample size at least 30? Well, in this case, it was, right? It was 100. All right, so let me put another asterisk. So assumption two was met. Which means I can put the n here. All right. So we're in a situation where we don't know the shape of the population. It wasn't given to us. But we do know the shape of the sampling distribution because the central limit theorem is kicked in. Okay, great. So with that, let's start trying to calculate some probabilities, either from my population distribution or from my sampling distribution. Let's see what we got here. So if I look at part B, part B is saying, hey, can you find the probability that the age of a tablet user is more than 30 years old? So I see probability, I need some stuff in parentheses, all right, age was my variable, so that is x, more than 30 years old. Okay, and you could write greater than or greater than or equal to. It's not going to matter. Now, I think most, or at least when we're starting this, students are tempted to just go normal CDF. Be careful, right? x, you're talking about your population distribution. Is x normally distributed? You don't know. There's a question mark here. So don't go use a normal CDF here. You don't know that you can use it. So I would put a question mark in general. I'm not sure that I can use normal CDF. I have, was not given that information about my population distribution. For all I know, this was a severely skewed right distribution, just like an example too with the hockey games. All right, the playoff times for the, or the, yeah, the times for the playoff games in overtime for the hockey league, right? I don't know that this is normally distributed, so I don't know that I can use a normal CDF here. This is a version of where you can't do the problem, okay? So if you went through and used normal CDF, that's actually incorrect here. You don't have that information. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, is she gonna throw problems like that around on quizzes and tests? Absolutely. You need to be able to assess when you're allowed to use normal CDF and when you're not. And this is a case where you cannot because you don't know the shape of the population distribution. All right, part C, 
it says find the probability that the sample mean age is more than 30. All right, so we see capital P. We need stuff in parentheses. And look at this phrase. Now it's not a tablet user, but the average age of these 100 tablet users is more than 30. So this is x bar. Is that one greater than 30? Now, are you allowed to use normal CDF if you are looking at averages? Yes. All right, the N is there. And that's why stats folks are always way into averages. We know through the central limit theorem we get normality as soon as we have a sample size of 30 or higher, which is why a ton of experiments, if they've got the money, will at least have 30 folks in their sample because it forces normality on the sampling distribution. So here, I can use normal CDF, but let's go ahead and label and scale our axes so we know what we're looking at as we work through this problem. All right, so here, I do have the bell curve. I've got an X bar on my X axis. I've got the probability of X bar on my Y. And we know what the shape and the scaling of this thing would be. We, we figured out the distribution right here. So I know 34 will be under the peak. And again, just for the sake of practicing, let's go three up and three back as we start to work with this. So I'll go three deviations up and three deviations back, just so we can see what this would scale out to be. So my standard deviation is 1.5. So let's go 34 plus 1.5. It's going to get a little cramped. So we got 35.5 here. I got 37. I think I can do this one in my head. This would be 38.5. Let me do 34 minus 1.5. We're looking at 32.5. If I subtract another 1.5, I'm at 31. And if I subtract another 1.5, I'm at 29.5. Okay. So with that, I want to figure out what is... Oh, I did not label this. Excuse me. This is average age. And this is still in years. If I start inside my parentheses, I gotta look for 30 along the x-axis. It's pretty far under the mean, because you could see that three deviations under the mean was 29.5. So it's here at right about there, 30. And I need to go to the right of that because I have a greater than. So that is a lot of area under that curve. I'm expecting a number pretty close to one, like 98, 99%. We'll see what I get in just a moment. So let me go ahead and run this. Now I'm going from 30 to positive infinity. So I'm going to go normal CDF of, let me put a little space here, low, high, what was my mean? 34. And my standard deviation was 1.5. So let's see what numbers we are working with. So I will go here and say normal CDF, low, High. Our mean, our average tablet user was 34, and on the sampling distribution, the standard error was 1.5. So as we work through that, we're looking, yeah, pretty darn high, right? 0.996. I knew it was going to be really high just based on this graph. So again, I really want to reiterate, I could not use normal CDF here. I did not know the shape of my population distribution, but the CLT kicked in for the sampling distribution. I was allowed to put the N in, because we saw in example two that regardless of the shape of the distribution that you start out with, our sampling distributions do go normal. And that became something very important for us. So I'll just remind you, right? We started with something in example two that was extremely skewed right, and by the time we looked at averages of size 30, I could put the approximately normal here. So I'm allowed to use normal CDF when the shape's normal, and I'm not allowed to use it when it isn't, which is why in, oops, excuse me, in this example, I could not use normal CDF in part B, 
but I could use it in part C. All right, so with that, let's look at this last question. All right, so this says, find the 95th percentile for the sample mean age to one decimal place. All right, so we haven't done what I call the backwards problems in a little while. So this is us just reviewing that concept. And when I say backwards problems, right, that's when I give you the percentile and you need to go back and get me a value of your variable, get me an average age. So let's try this, right? So I'm gonna say X bar would be equal to inverse norm. And there are three pieces you need to feed your calculator. You need to give it the percentile, all right? And I wanna be super clear, percentile, the cumulative relative frequency. If you're using the um, empirical rule ever, you would have to convert those middle numbers to percentiles. But we've got the cumulative relative frequency. We knew the average age was one, excuse me, was 35 and the standard error was 1.5. So as I crunch this, okay, remember inverse norm is the same in the same menu, um, the same menu in your calculator, it's just option three, and you put in 0.95, then you put in the mean, then you put in, in this case, the standard error, and we get about 36.47. Oh, and if I'm rounding to what they asked. It said round to one decimal place, so I'm gonna go 36.5. All right, and whenever you're going inverse norm, keep in mind, this is a value of the average age of these tablet users from this random sample of 100 tablet users. So what are the units on this? Years. All right, and I put a little note here, okay? I always say that when you do the, the backwards problems, don't forget to add units to your answer because I gave you a percent this time and you're getting me a value of your variable. Whereas usually I give you a value of your variable and you get me a percent, okay, or a probability. So when you're going backwards, don't forget to tack on the years, the units, just like I gave you the units initially. All right, so with that, that's gonna conclude us taking a look at sample means or I should say the sampling distribution for averages, we're gonna change, change course a bit and we're gonna move over to the sampling distribution for proportions. And again, I mentioned in the beginning, your book doesn't really do a solid job of talking about this. I mean, it's in the book, but it's really subtle. So we're gonna look at proportions. So all of a sudden we're gonna have categorical variables come back into play. We're gonna be looking at frequency counts and turning them into relative frequency counts or sample proportions and looking at that distribution, that graph. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.